Okay, so today's video is going to be incredibly exciting. We're training with Mr. Mark Coles, who's a mentor who helped me leave my full-time career three and a half years ago now, maybe two and a half years ago. Um, so we've got an exciting chat coming up and also a leg training session that we're going to take you through. There needs to be kind of like more entrepreneurial conversations because in you're in that position and I'm in that position, I think it's a very interesting conversation to talk about kind of what we've seen change in ourselves while you're trying to grow something bigger and then you wouldn't be here if you hadn't done the foundations of the coach aspect. So what was ironic, so Lewis is already filming this, when I first came to you a few years ago, I was working a full-time job as an SA agent. I remember messaging you when I left as well. I remember, because you said, were you not sat at the top of Richmond? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was sat in like Rygate Hill. Yeah. Rygate Hill, yeah, yeah. I remember. But they, they come to this big crossing point where I think, you know, you've been very active as a coach for a long time. I was active for a coach for a very long time. And there's a transitional point. I think, very interestingly, there's probably going to be a lot of coaches watching this that, are you a coach forever? Do you have bigger ambitions and goals? When did that change for you, where you went, I can't really now see myself coaching forever, but I'm making an impact? So that's something I've spoken about a few times, is like, oh, goal, my goal is to by 2030, and they've like transformed the world 100,000 clients. Yeah. So for me to be able to do that, I obviously can't do that work in my own. I can't handle working with any more clients. So... It then comes down, like we talked about earlier, where it comes down to learning new skills and becoming a new person in terms of building a team of people who can then help you on your mission and vision to achieve what you want. Yeah, yeah. And what I think, and what we talked about earlier, I think the biggest mistake people make generally with fitness business and everything is they don't realise if you want to change and achieve something much bigger, you, you personally have to change and become a different person yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of the way you think, the way you feel, and maybe the way you react to different challenges that are put in front of you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. The bigger the goal, the bigger the challenges and problems you're going to have, which I'm sure you found for your career. Huge, huge. I, I'm studying a lot of Joe Dispenza's work at the moment, for people that are not familiar um, and, uh, with his work. But he said, if you want to be unlimited, you need to think unlimited. And it's quite interesting that a lot of the fit pros, naturally, as I'm going through my career, I wasn't thinking unlimited. I was thinking, great coach, help people. And then there will be a lot of people watching this that are kind of like, but I am at that point whereby I'm doing really well, I've got loads of clients. But is this my stopping point? Now you naturally probably would have got to a point where you had so many clients and went, is this where I stop? What was the big pivotal change for you where you went, God, I, I can actually work with thousands? It was actually meeting a friend of mine, I mentioned this loads of times, Franklin Blanken, the guy in the Netherlands. So he saw something in me that I didn't, couldn't see myself. And what he, was that? He pushed me, just my ability to maybe just grow my business and help more people. And he was also eye-opening in terms of seeing what he was doing with his business and the level he was running at. Like he has 22,000 clients. Frank Common has just, this if I'm wrong, but he has a massive fitness business. And I'd never even seen or heard of it. Result of like transformation? Yeah. No, no, literally monthly, like clients currently on his books, 22,000. Wow. So I was like, that was like completely like mind blowing. I was like, so that's what can be done. It's like, that's the goal then. And that's the bar. And that's where, who then I'm chasing him. And I give this analogy a lot. Uh, Michael Jordan ended up basically mentoring Kobe Bryant. And I always say to him, it's like, he's like Michael Jordan, I'm Kobe amazing, Bryant. Amazing. I'm chasing him as like the young, like a slightly younger guy yeah, yeah, yeah. come up behind. If your mentor is a little bit ahead of you, it's time to potentially get a new mentor. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it's very interesting. You know, talking to people with sales figures, with business coaching programs or personal training businesses. And, you know, people are saying, oh, we're, we're doing... X amount of PT sessions every single week, and then you're like, you speak to a gym that's doing 300 every single week, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to move to the one that's doing 300 because they're doing something better than us. And then you start to run online, you speak to somebody, and you go, how many clients you got? You go, 70. And you're like, uh, 500. And you're like, holy crap. You meeting Frank, was that something that you went in search of? Because this is a bit. This is, I heard about Frank on might be Craig Valentine's podcast. So I literally, I literally remember going on Google being like, like just type in his name, couldn't find anything. I thought nothing of it. I went and then a couple of months later, I flew to the US. I went to an event in January in Clearwater, Florida. Guess who's there? Wow. And then I ended up speaking to him a bit at the event. And then he, funny enough, was going to the same event I was going to in Nashville, Tennessee, like the week later, bumped into the airport. Uh, we ended up training together out there a few times, came like, best mates and then the rest is history from there onwards. Wow, wow, but that wow. is like almost like law of attraction in terms of like, I heard this, this guy super inspired me with what he'd achieved. I wanted to find out how he did this. And he almost like appeared in my life by me taking action and going to like 
put myself out of my comfort zone, going to an event in the US, which originally actually caused some friction in my relationship. You saying that, right, how, how's this? I'm sat in Nottingham and I'm thinking, I want to be one of the world's most renowned coaches, right? And I know that Ben Bukowski, good friend of ours, um, world renowned, right? And I got a, a message on Facebook and it just said, ISSM conference in Florida, speaking with Ben Brad Schoenfeld. And I said, I'm going. And that afternoon I booked a flight and I went, it was at the weekend, it was like Wednesday and I went on the Saturday. And I sat in the front, I kept asking questions, I'm probably very annoyed. And at the end, I just said, can I take you for breakfast tomorrow? And he was like, I don't even know who this guy is. Yes, charged me probably a lot more money than he would have normally done. And from that moment, we became very good friends. And this is interesting, putting yourself in the environment where these people are and making sure you get noticed. He wouldn't have trained with you if you weren't someone that he would want to hang out with. And funny enough, when I spoke to Ben and he saw the fact that I was in shape, he actually said to me, do you want to write for MI40? He was intrigued by my results and what I'd done. Like, how, how much do you think the work that you've done on you over the years has impacted your ability to get in front and speak to people? I think it's everything because you're, like, the biggest thing I try to focus on daily is the way I think and, like, improving my mindset. I think that's probably the biggest thing I've changed the last 12 months because, a lot, like I said to you earlier, all I have to do is have one great idea a day and then that's it. And to change your life, all you've got to do is have a handful of great ideas, great yeah, decisions, yeah, yeah. and that's yeah, it. Yeah. And I think the problem is too many people get, um, they have too much of a busy mind and become a busy fool trying to do too many different things, too many different businesses. They jump across too many different training programs. There's no like clear cut, I'm just gonna do these one, two things, become fucking amazing at them, and then just double down on that, and, like get renowned for that and make a name for yourself. Yeah. And I think when you start to get traction with anything, is there like a, a gravitational effect, things start to then pull towards you. Almost like a bit like the law of attraction thing in particular with that Frank well, scenario. What it, what, it, what it is, because you know, Joseph Spencer is a big believer in, you know, um, where you place your, you know, energy flows, you know, business grows where energy flows. And at the end of the day, if you're placing your energy in multiple different businesses and you've not got one of them working well, then you're basically spreading yourself too thin. You're not putting your attention into those. A genius doesn't have great answers, he asks great questions. Yeah. And it then becomes down to you becoming self-aware of what do you actually want and what do you actually enjoy doing. And we talked about that a bit about training today um, in terms of if you don't like a certain type of training, you probably shouldn't be doing it. I'm not going to do it, I'll find someone else who can do it, yeah. who's going to be better than me and probably enjoys it and will do a way better job and I don't have to think about it. And if I have to pay someone loads of money to do that, I'd rather pay them that, me be happier and not have as much money. Which I think too many people in society now are afraid to spend either on themselves or the business to maybe go a step further and faster rather than having that small minded um, fear mindset. Whereas I want to have an abundance mindset where it's like I can have whatever I want in life. I want to be in shape. I want to be successful. I want to help loads of people. I want to travel like whatever I want. I can ultimately do that. And anyone can have whatever they want, but ultimately comes down to you taking action and implementing, which is what we said earlier, is one of the big mistakes. Everyone's got ideas, but no one actually follows through with things yeah, and executes, yeah, yeah. or is patient enough. Exactly, and do you know what? It's funny you say this, because fixed mindset. Mm. Now the funny thing is, this is what amazes me, fascinates me. It's that, it's that big, bold move that you made. I mean, I took it fascinated for everybody to hear. Was it nerve wracking for you? Because like leaving that state agency, that's been the catalyst for you to abundance. Hmm. Freedom. Freedom. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's not, if you take me back four or five years, I said freedom, freedom. Like, I don't have a desire to sit on a beach and do nothing. I don't want freedom as in zero purpose. I think people get that confused. Laptop sitting on the beach, freedom, okay? I do want to be free in my mind. And I think you and I talked about this. If I can be creative and build this thing, this empire that I want to build and help thousands of coaches all over the world and keep it growing. I need to be clear. So we're, we're almost building something over time and challenging ourselves and giving ourselves a bigger purpose to eventually have these people that are working in your environment to keep that one person who is able to help more people around the world creative and the more creative you can be, you can grow. So it's like, I don't think anybody listening to this video right now has an inability to grow. But that stepping stone that you made from a state agency, what's the big take home that you could share with somebody from that minute that you stepped away 
for uncomfortable because that was probably comfortable mm, there. Super comfortable. Your mind automatically goes to the worst case scenario, but instead of going to the worst case scenario, imagine the best case scenario. Worst case scenario for me at that time, it didn't work, I go and get another job. Best case scenario, I live the life I actually want to have and have everything I want. And like a great example of that, I put an Instagram story up today and like my wife asked, What do you want for your birthday? I don't want anything. I like I'm not really into materialistic stuff anymore, but if I want something I can have it and everything yeah. I have I can travel where I want, I can do what I want, I speak to who I want to, I get to spend time with awesome people, like I can work when I want, like and that for me is all I've ever wanted is to be able to do what I want with who I want when I want. And let's not be unrealistic, right? This is really massive, right? Because I think, you know, like Marsh and I were talking about this the other day, it's important to show what we, where we've got to. And that's a crazy thing, because I think maybe in the past, especially with social media, it's like, don't show that, show the reality, show this. But things have progressed, but it's like, I'm 21 years deep. I mean, if I can't show people what I've been able to achieve in 21 years when I thought I was absolutely thick as shit, in the early days, then you don't give anybody the opportunity to aspire to something. But there was a massive phase of your career which you dedicated to building your physique, building your knowledge, that I think most people will look at it right now and say, Charlie's traveling, Charlie's got this, he's got this massive team. But during those early phases, what was your brain doing? What were you, what were you, were you thinking abundance, travel, investments in those early days? Or were you thinking, I just desperately want to become great at coaching? I just want to become a better version of myself because I knew I'm big into like leading by example. Like we spoke about Frank, like he inspires me with what he's achieved, and if I can do that with myself, and then other people are inspired by the way I look or the way I train or what I do, that will help other people to take action. Because I'm not massively genetically gifted. I've had to learn, like you mentioned there, in terms of like lunges and stuff like that. My mechanics are pretty poor. Got a lot better now, by the way. Yeah, but but that's the fun bit. It's learning. For me, it's learning how to fix things. And that's what I love about life and business is creating things and improving things and making something out of nothing, yeah, which yeah. never even existed. Yeah, and, and, and you've done that from the start. And I think, unless you, we talked about it while we are having some food just now, we were talking about unless you learn those fundamental skills, I think this is a great point to touch on. Everybody wants everybody else to try and help them do stuff, but very few people want to learn how to do the things first. What are the fundamental things in business that you would say any young entrepreneur or any business or any fitness professional watching this, what are the subjects in business that you should not avoid learning? Number one is marketing and sales because, and this can be very cliche because people say you shouldn't need to sell. However, we are very good at selling and what that actually allows us to do is to convince people who actually doubt their ability to change to actually take the first step. Because as soon as you get someone to take the first step, they see progress, momentum comes, bang. And that's where you actually need to be able to push people over the line to take the first step and actually have confidence in themselves. Because it's the same in terms of people losing weight or creating a business. People are too afraid to ask for help or to actually start. And once people actually start and they start to see some progression, it then starts to stack on itself and they start to see an upward trend. Yeah. I think, you know, I was talking to somebody, you know, you and I were talking about CEOs and, 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 and you know, for businesses. Um, I was talking to my CMO because I have chief marketing and I've actually placed chief marketing over chief just ops. The reason I do is like you do, I think marketing is probably the most, one of the most valuable positions in a business because if they know marketing and strategy, systems and processes, to me, operations is very similar, but for, for me, I've always placed marketing at, at one of the highest priority points because if we can get in front of more people we can help more people and I think that that's it's funny that a lot of people want to come from doing PT growing an online business and the first thing they want to do is right who can I hire to do that thing but if you don't know it like this is something Charlie and I were talking about while we're having some food if you don't know it you can't manage anyone I think you've made that great yeah. point you, you can't if you don't know you can't, you, can't, manage you, can't, you can't delegate something if you don't fully understand it so you don't have to be a genius at it. But you have to have a basic understanding. Because yeah, yeah. otherwise, if you try and delegate something to someone, then their actual ability to then be able to almost provide you feedback to then actually improve that relationship and for them to actually be able to do a good job is going to be compromised. And it's not necessarily their fault. And every, every issue within business and nearly everything in life is always communication-based. Yeah, yeah. Every problem is always going to be communication-based. 
And if you have a better understanding of what that person does within their role, your ability to, to articulate what you want from that person and then to be able to provide that feedback back to you is going to improve, which is going to improve their quality of work and then help the business. So your journey as a professional, the more you learn, the more valuable leader you become further down the line. And I was talking to somebody yesterday that I, I coach, and uh, I said to him, uh, I know you have a Facebook ads person that works for you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what's the data tell you? What data do you receive? And I looked at him and I said, you skim over it, don't you? He went, yeah. I said, because you don't understand it, do you? He went, no. Nah. And I said, the problem is, it's not working. And you're spending a lot of money every month because you don't understand it. So the first thing is, shit, we need, we need ads. Here, you have X amount of thousands per month to run our ads. But if you don't understand it, you don't understand the data, you're just letting money drain out of the business, but it's not actually working. And it was like, I think I should, I think I should understand this a bit better. And then you have to shift your thought process so that you can actually send, start managing the people that are inside the business. I think that's something that you said today just, just you know, really resonated with me and, and is that everyone's trying to delegate but very few people want to learn it. And I think you and I have been lifelong learners and if you go back to both of our homes, there's books on ads and marketing. There was a big shift though, wasn't there? Because when we first got together, when we first met each other, really, you were not doing as much marketing yourself. I think your, your profile was going quick, quick. Yeah, so I think that's the biggest thing that I need to learn is actually is learning how to learn and actually being effective with that. Yeah, I, I think love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the best things you can do is firstly focus on in my opinion, the order of things I do is look at books in terms of your own personal habits because your habits are going to define who you are and they're going to compound for you over time either favorably or negatively. So if you've got the right habits and you do that consistently, that, that's going to help you improve. If you've got bad habits and you do those consistently, that's going to pull you back. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing people need to really focus on from fitness and business they need to really fix. Um, which is why two books I really recommend for that, no plug, are... Atomic Habits by James Clear, which you've probably read. And then um, the other one, Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Not read that. Uh, I just read recently, that rabbi guy recommended, that's insane, so that's very good. Right. Um, and as soon as you start to flip the switch in terms of, say, from a fitness perspective, not picking up that extra bit of dark chocolate every day, how that compounds up in, the, in, in terms of what you're doing, or like actually finishing an extra task every day, how that compounds for you over time, you suddenly realize how these things accumulate and help you go faster and rather than most people tend to try and self-sabotage themselves. And I think we live in a, a society where the biggest disease is, is not the thing we're not allowed to talk about on social media, but it's actually comfort. If your life is predictable, you're not building a future, which, which I, fascinated me. So if every day is the same, there's nothing within that day that is designed to be building a better future. And if you are a predictable person, i.e. you just love habit and routine and systems and processes, you don't, create that challenge. I know you travel, challenge, travel meets new people, travel makes you want to earn more and doing different things and challenging yourself is really, really important. But I think a lot of people get into that very habitual. And, and, and the other thing is, and I'm going to want to ask you this, why are you able to be so disciplined? Because I know you say no to a lot of stuff. There's always opportunities for me and you to do lots of stuff. But you and I like being on our own. So this is interesting. I, a couple of reasons for this. Yeah, to do us yeah, yeah, so this is a good question. So there's a couple of reasons for this. One, I would say I'm naturally introvert and I like being on my own and having time to think because, like I said earlier, I like to ask myself questions and, and think it? about where's my life going, what do I really want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, particularly as you go through life and you start to, like, I have everything I ever wanted already. Like, I can do what I want and have freedom. So it's like, when you have everything you want, you're like, okay, what do I do now? And that's... That may sound like really arrogant or egotistical, but it's, it's actually a, an interesting question. That's what happens to a lot of people who are very successful to sell a business. They've got loads of money and then they become depressed because they're like, what do I do now? I don't think. You've completed life. And you always have to have something next to keep you motivated. And that's for me where I like, um, like planning forwards with things like that. And I like to just focus on one or two things rather than being scattered across too many. Yeah. And a great example of that is if you take like a... A genius versus an idiot. If you had a genius that's got four businesses he runs versus an idiot who runs one business, the idiot's going to beat the genius because the genius is split four ways across four different fields of focus, whereas the idiot's just focus on one thing yeah, and just yeah, perfect yeah, that. Um, and the other thing I would say is I, it doesn't come across, but I'm inherently quite lazy with a lot of things. So I don't want to do something unless I'm either in or I'm out. Like I don't want to do something half-hearted. So 
if I want to do something like online training, I want to be the best online trainer in the world, like the goat of online training, then I'm all in on that. If I don't want to, if I want to start a supplement brand, I go all in on that. I'm not going to like dabble with that, dip my toe in it and then, and then go back. You've got to be all in all out. Well, listen, we've got to get on. Yeah. Um, we trained, we ate, we caught up. Yeah. It'd be great to see you, bud. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you so much. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you.